Our immune system is supposed to protect us, but when something goes wrong, immune cells can attack the body, leading to autoimmune diseases like multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory bowel disease, and more. Many years ago, a subset of T cells was identified, uh, which seems to play a very important role in many human autoimmune diseases. It has been implicated in, uh, in psoriasis, in rheumatoid arthritis, unclosing spondylitis, multiple sclerosis. And uh, the question we wanted to ask is how does this highly pathogenic pro inflammatory T cell develop? A team of scientists has been carefully studying changes over time in one type of immune cell, known as a T helper 17 or TH17 cell. Their analysis led them to an unlikely suspect in the study of autoimmune diseases, salt. We spoke to team members from the Broad Institute's Klarman Cell Observatory, Brigham and Women's Hospital, MIT, and Harvard University to find out more about how their approach led them to this unexpected result. So basically there's a network in the cell, but the network constantly changes. So if you look at the cell now, there's one network, and if you come in two hours later, there's going to be a different network. It's like changing under your hands. So you have to figure out what it is, but it's never fixed. Well, we want to know what something is doing, so we are just going to knock it down and see what, what are the results and just try to reverse engineer what happened there. Researchers usually do this by knocking down or silencing a gene. This proved to be very challenging in immune cells. Immune cells have evolved to detect foreign invaders. This made it very difficult for researchers to perturb them using traditional approaches. But Hong Kong Park's lab at Harvard had been developing a new tool that could be applied to the problem, a tiny bed of silicon nanowires. And it turned out the nanowires, small silicon nanowires that Alex and Yeller have developed, you know, are ideally suited to perturb them. The technology is extremely simple. Uh, basically what we've done is we've made a bed of nothing more than needles. And uh, what we do is we place cells on top of them. The, we basically have these silicon nanowires that act as needles. We coat them with a small molecule. As the cells settle down, the nanowire uh, pierces the cell membrane and delivers whatever's coated on the surface into the cell. So we used our nanowire platform to silence a set of individual genes during TH17 differentiation. And this allowed us not only to validate our theoretical model, but also um, refine the interactions between the components of the model. Using this technology, the researchers mapped out the wiring of T cells. One particular gene in these networks stood out to the researchers, SGK1. SGK1 had not been described in T cells before, but it had been found in cells in the gut and in kidneys, where it plays a role in absorbing salt. The researchers then moved from cells into mice to test the effects of salt. When they induced autoimmune diseases in mice fed a high salt diet, they saw more severe forms of the disease than would otherwise be seen. With the mice had high salt diet, they start to develop um, severe, more severe disease than the uh, mice with the normal diet, which indicate that the high salt diet can increase or potentially the risk of the autoimmunity. But salt doesn't tell the whole story. Other genetic and environmental risk factors are likely at play in autoimmune diseases. Like SGK1, there are several other molecules uh, that could be the targets of environment or the targets of drug development. Okay. And with Hong Kong's technology this, uh, these guys are developed, uh, we are pursuing them and hopefully we can harness uh, all the data from the papers to bring forth some of these molecules mm -hmm. as drug targets and develop drugs for them. This work marks one of the first success stories to emerge from the Broad Institute's Klarman Cell Observatory an effort that brings together researchers and new technologies to define cellular circuits. The goal of the observatory is to really bring this kind of toolbox mm -hmm. into different types of cells, of human cells or mammalian cells, mm -hmm. which could be of interest to different types of diseases. So these cells, very important in autoimmune diseases, there are other cells that would be amenable to the same type of approach. Analysis. And again, who knows what discovery you make, because if you come with an unbiased approach, 
and build these network models, all of a sudden all sorts of crazy genes pop up. 